Do you believe in reincarnation and the possibility of past lives? Join me in our newest series of Yvette Investigates, where I undergo my own past life regression journey to find out who I was in a past life and how this impacts my life in the present. With help from Sal from Spacious Wings Therapies, join me as I explore the most important parts of my past life, meet the characters that were closest to me and work to restore peace to the person I used to be. You can hear things like this. Sounds like trust is important to you. Yes, it is very important. But I don't know who to trust anything. And this. They're making me... I don't want to sign this. No. But they're making me sign it. I feel I have to. But I know it's not right. It's making me quite upset, actually. You can access this brand new series at www.paranormalpod.co.uk. So don't walk, run! Welcome back. I recently took part in a past life regression experience with Saloni Batavia from Spacious Wing Therapies. She guided me through my past life where I met some of the most prevalent people in my life at that time and helped me to remove the parts of this life that were no longer needed. Now you can hear the full experience in our bonus episode this Saturday um, at www.paranormalpod.co.uk. That's www.paranormalpod.co.uk. Now let's welcome Sal today, who's going to tell us more about past lives and what they mean for our current lives. Sal, it's absolutely wonderful that you're joining us on the podcast because I'm absolutely fascinated with regression. So I've been reading all the books by Brian Weiss. To me, from being a little girl, I was always interested in regression. I truly believe in reincarnation. Um, So how does it work for you? And first of all, how did you get into it? Hi, Yvette. Thank you. So I'm very passionate about regressions, especially past life regression. I had actually an experience that was connected to Brian Wise. So it's it's great that you and I have got that connection with, you know, he's quite a profound, well-known figure in the past life uh, world. And um, he's written several amazing books. And so I'd say about eight, nine years ago, I went to a conference in London and he was a guest speaker amongst many at that conference. And he did a group, a kind of a massive auditorium regression, past life, but went through a bit of child, going back in time to child through womb and then into a past life. And I had the most profound experience it was an extremely a body experience I still am not connecting to a specific memory of a past life but something happened which stayed with me and it I felt like something happened almost preconception of my preconception and it was phenomenal and I went away trying to did some research on what happened around my birth, what, you know, that may have kind of led to my physical experience that was mainly in my throat. But um, unfortunately, I wasn't able to get that information because certain people aren't around to get that from anymore. But I always said something magical and quite powerful happened there when I was taken back. And I decided I would go and do one of his workshops in America one day. And that's exactly what I did. So about I can't remember how many years later, I went to the States and I did his workshop. And I met him and I met his wife, so I was trained by them. That's when my professional journey began, let's say, in this field. I had definitely say that I think I've been connecting to past life stuff for many years, probably since I was a child, in dream state, through meditation, through daydreaming, (laughs) and through synchronicity. As the more I've kind of gone into this work and worked with people and done my own, 
the more synchronicities I have come across, which explains so much about my current life. For people who don't know very much about reincarnation, they've heard of it. A lot of people not quite sure what to think. Yes. What would you say to them? What is reincarnation? Let, let's just let's just go back to the basics for the people that don't understand it. Um, how does the soul reincarnate? What happens? How many lives can you live? I'm just going to fire some questions at you that, you know, the layman will be like, okay, this is what I think. How many lives does a soul live? Do you mirror those lives in your current life? Um, you often hear of people saying, I've got a neck ache and find out in, you know, years ago that they were hanged. Why is it when people get regressed, they're always Henry VIII or Cleopatra? You know, um, so many things. Can regression actually help you, which we'll move on to later. I want to ask you that later on. But just for now, just answer those really basic questions. Right. Okay. A lot of questions. I'll try my best. So reincarnation, it's about basically having more than one life, the soul being born again kind of thing. And many religions all over the world, obviously Hinduism, Buddhism, they're very well-known religions. And we talk a lot about reincarnation. It's a big part of the religious scriptures. But there are several religions in the world that at some point in history have been open to an afterlife, into past lives. So it's about the soul, you know, coming back in different ways to, to learn and grow through having a life experience. You know, every time the soul comes back, it has a goal or a plan or maybe in almost a task that's decided maybe in spirit state to learn and grow from a new experience. Some people, you know, this is an open kind of argument where their animals come into this. You know, there are some schools that may say no animals don't reincarnate, but I've had people that when I've taken them in, they've come in an animal form. It's happened only a few times, but it has happened. And there are the, the some that believe in almost going to other other planets, you know, maybe going to other places completely and having existences and lives even there. When somebody connects to the past life, there may be some themes, some energy, some issues that are being brought forward in the reincarnated soul. When we someone comes to me for a past life regression session, it might be that we are trying to perhaps find out more about what they are experiencing that may be stemming from a past life. So you mentioned a neck ache, you know, something like that, you know, we could go to the root of the neck ache, find out where it came from if it's a past life issue. And often it is. Often intuitively we kind of know there's roots to this. Um, with reincarnation as a theme, you know, it's it's always open to well, is it real or not? past lives real does any of this really exist you know it's always an open discussion there has been a lot of research done on reincarnation ian stevenson is a quite famous guy who wrote about it he went to india lots of stuff to do with children did lots of research and a guy called ian lawton actually wrote a great book called the big book of the soul which is a great book which has got theory in it it's also got case examples over several different you know over a very big vast amount of time and it's not all his own research it's research that he's gathered together from different parts of the world from various professionals you know we're talking about psychiatrists here using hypnosis so there is some research that has been written out there about past lives and people being able to find information to prove they were this person once that kind of thing but for the everyday person you know, I have a client that might come along and they go into a past life and they get some very specific details, perhaps about years, names, locations, things that they weren't familiar with at all. And then they go and do their research. And I've had a few people that have actually found the person they were once. And they, you know, in their conscious mind have no information or idea or knowledge about that part of the world or that kind of thing, maybe if it's a political thing. So, there are those that have gone away and kind of said, right, I've been able to prove I was that person after having my experience. So it requires an open heart, 
an open mind. And I had an example. I actually had an atheist come to me the other day for a regression. But she is really open to expanding her spirituality. She wants to work on some themes and issues in her present life that are really affecting her and stopping her from, you know, being the best person she could be because they keep repeating themselves. So we actually ended up doing a past life regression on her and it was great because she ended up accessing a life and working through the themes and going into spirit state and the afterlife and working on things, yet she doesn't necessarily believe in those things. But she saw the benefits of how that process could heal and help her let go and move forward in her life and so that's a great example of you don't always have to believe in reincarnation believe in things like the afterlife believe in guides but if you're open to just having an experience to perhaps help yourself heal and grow release move forward and just do something different and new it goes a long way so so why might someone wish to embark on a past life regression session Yes, there's a lot, actually. Um, there could be basically a pure reason of curiosity. I know that you came with some curiosity, for example. And so somebody may just want to know a little bit about their previous existences, perhaps expand their spirituality. Um, a lot of people that come to me are actually quite new on a spiritual path. and They kind of get a bit open explosion when they do some regression. And people that want to understand themselves better, perhaps uh, understand why they are the way they are, why life is how it is, particularly if they're things that they're not particularly happy with or would like to change. It can sometimes help deepen a sense of self-acceptance. And that in itself can be extremely healing. I feel that people often come because they actually want to heal or release or improve something in their lives. Perhaps you could say transform it. And so like we touched on the theme of guilt that came up for you, people can come with various physical ailments such as uh, headaches, back issues, maybe infertility, right down to emotional issues, things that really trouble them that perhaps block them, maybe issues with jealousy or fear, anger, you know, not having struggles with boundaries um, and going on to that, relationships. And a big, big part of my clientele come because of relationship issues, whether, again, it's about boundaries, whether it's about meeting someone to settle down with or finding that hard, not trusting people, fears and issues around attachments, and obviously to do with the relationship with themselves. Again, people come for maybe phobias, addictions, blocks, manifesting people come for positive reasons like uh, I had an artist who came because her work was just not getting recognized and her commissions just went off the roof about four or five days after our uh, session so these are kind of various kind of symptoms why people may come but really um regression work particularly I'd say past life in a child work is actually very much about the here and now and the life moving forward so people you know, when I speak to people and they say, well, what is the point of going back there? We're here now. Why do you want to go back? But I always say to people, as far as my work is concerned, it is all about the now moving forward. But it's about trying to shift the stuff that keeps repeating itself, the stuff which perhaps has a root, which is much further back. Um, and just to add, when people do this work, there's a sense of letting go forgiveness and healing that comes about, which I guess we're going to maybe talk a little bit more about shortly. Um, but there is really a sense of unburdening that can occur with this work because you get to understand where it comes from, the theme or the issue, and actually do some empowering work to release it so this is could be seen as a form of healing or self-healing rather um, and one of the things that a lot of my clients have said whether they've come to my groups or whether they've done one-to-one -one sessions with me is their psychic ability has really opened up their ability their intuition because when we do this work we're working with intuition we're working with the information that we're trusting is coming through whatever way it is, whatever sense it's coming through in. So a lot of my clients have really started to trust their intuition more afterwards. And a lot of people have found they can meditate 
a lot more easily because of the stilling of the mind. So the family that you're with now and your relations, are they the same souls that you that you live in your past life, but they're different? So like Carl, my husband, could have been my sister or my mother in another life. What I've found through my work, often working maybe more in the kind of between life state particularly, is that we tend to have soul groups and different roles in soul groups. So I, I had a client yesterday that we worked in that state and she recognised for her, her current life souls, current life family, friends, those that she's close to, those that have had a massive impact in her life, whether it be good and possibly not so good as well, they are people that she has been reincarnating with a lot in recent lives and future lives to come. I've had other clients where maybe significant people in their current life, they, they make a special appearance and they haven't been in all their lives. So we are tending to work with soul groups, but we can have primary, we can have secondary soul groups. There can have be numerous souls that we're working with and we keep coming back with, it's quite likely that if you feel a strong resonance with somebody, whether it be a parent or a family member or somebody you just meet, you know that feeling where you've met someone, don't know them, but you feel you've met them before, you feel connected. I had a, the most incredible experience. Carl and myself were in a, a town called Leek, just looking in an antiques shop and we were up on the top floor and I heard this woman's voice coming into the shop and she was with her partner. She came into the show and I, as soon as I heard the voice, I panicked and I said to Carl, oh my God, I cannot let this woman go out of the shop. I need to, I need to get in communication with her. Anyway, she came up the stairs and I said to her straight away, I pretended and I went, have we met before? And she said, well, I, I recognize you. She said, but I don't think we've ever met before. And and I said, I know this sounds really strange. I said, but can I give you my phone number? I said, because I, I really like to keep in touch with you. Now, that I never do that, ever. And on the way home, Carl was like, why have you given a complete stranger your phone number? And I said, because I know that I've met this person in another life, because as soon as I heard her voice, I knew it. So I would love to find out where she is in one of my lives, because I know she was very important. I wonder if she was my like her sister or my mother or something. It was it was bizarre. And we've been firm friends ever since we have honestly firm firm friends we love each other to bits she's gorgeous that's amazing and that is an example of you know at a deep level it was a beyond mind beyond consciousness level it was a deep inner knowing yeah yeah wow i have a connection with that person that is beyond time and space potentially and deja vu is another great example of familiarity of being somewhere and like I've done this before, I've been here before. That's another great example. Another example, which is probably the one that many of us have been experiencing since we're very small children, is dreams. So many dreams, uh, give me an example, is having a dream that just feels so familiar. You're not you, and maybe your partner's not them. However, it's them, you just look different, you're different people, but it just feels like you. And again, that could be another example of past life connections forming. And again, I've had clients that have gone into a past life and they said, I've dreamt about that person. And there you go. Everybody will know that we've spoken about regression on, an, on a previous podcast, but I remember interviewing somebody and saying, oh, I'd love to be regressed. I'd love to find out who I was in a previous life. Now, the lovely thing is, is that Sal actually has regressed me. It was absolutely extraordinary to me. And I went in with a very open mind, very, very keen to find out who I was in a past life. And my, la I wanted to find out who I was in my last life because, and the reason why I bring it up is because you 
uh, brought something up there, dreams. I had been inundated for a couple of years with these very strange dreams where I wasn't me. I was somebody else, even though I never saw my face, but I was in this body and I was with people that I didn't know, I didn't understand. I was in strange situations um, that were really quite extraordinary. And these, And it was a feeling. I had the most amazing feeling that something was going on. So anyway, it was very exciting because Sal agreed and um, me and Carl, we traveled. I'm with the lovely producer, Molly. We traveled to Sal's home um, and um, we did a session, didn't we, which lasted for quite a few hours. And after that session, my I can honestly say that... We did find out who I was in, a, in another life. And for the for the sake of the uh, podcast, it was somebody famous in their time, but a lot of people wouldn't know who he was now. I was a man and I'm going to call him Alan. He was an influential person, but lived with, and this is what we got out of the ses- session, didn't we? But lived with this tremendous, awful guilt of being homosexual in the 60s, which is actually, Sal, what you spoke about at the beginning and how it's it's come full circle and infiltrated certain parts of my life. But it's since the regression, it's actually, I feel so much lighter. I feel so much happier. And it whatever it is, it, it certainly has worked. Whether, you know, let's look at the sceptical side of things. You know, was it my imagination? I don't know. Was it, was I really this character called Alan that lived in the 60s, that loved music, was homosexual, you know, didn't know what to do with his life? I don't know. Personally, I believe I was because the dreams marry up with the things that you know, was coming out in the session. I mean, what did you take from that that session, Sal? Well, I thought it was fabulous, really, because you went in. His energy came through, rather. His energy came through. I have the occasional client that will really embody that character that they were once because the voice came through, the body movements came through. It was just like it was another personality coming through. And... You know, one of the questions I would say is the physical, because you had some physical energy as well, and there was a lot of emotions that came through. And I would ask you, Yvette, how did they feel? Did they feel real for you in that moment? Yes, I remember the one of the first sensations was feeling really nauseous and, and sick in my in my stomach. I remember that. There are certain things that I remember and it was it ended I only thought that I was on your sofa for an hour, but it was three hours. It was a long time. Yeah. And I remember thinking, why is my hair all crispy? And then I realized it was because I'd been crying. Yes. And all, all the tears had gone into my rolled into my hair. And it was a very, very it was like a purge. I was purging all these amazing emotions that my soul or that past life had been carrying. And according to yourself, you you managed to get out and ask a question, how many times has this reoccurring theme of guilt been going on? How many lives has Yvette's soul been going? And, and, and it was five, wasn't it? So what I want to do is, is I want to go back again and find out where the first life comes into connecting with this guilt. What's the story behind it? Where it all began, the root of it. Yes, because I work, my main theme with clients is where possible going to root cause because many of my clients come to me because they're having blocks in their lives. They Something needs to shift. They are wanting to go down the past life route for this Perhaps they've tried other things and it didn't work. So going to the root cause or the source of where or where it began of something can be extremely powerful. So for you, definitely uh, going to the to where the root of this, I mean, guilt, but it's kind of almost excessive, you know, really too much stuff, too much guilt. Yeah, it what it it really and just also sorry to interrupt you just to explain is that in my life, I do carry guilt, but guilt as in, I always want to make people happy. And I'm always doing things. I'm always doing things because it makes me happy. But if they're not happy, 
I have this immense, oh, it must be my fault. It must be my fault. Oh my gosh. I've, oh dear, that's terrible. That's terrible. And I've lived all my life like that. You know, you may have tried to address this at some point in your life during various methods, whatever it might be, but it's still there. And like you said, that massive sense of responsibility, which is draining, draining of, on you and it gets, you know, gets you upset and, but it's what it is, is it's just, it's almost like this, this heavy emotion, which potentially is just draining you. And it's something which, you know, we, we were able to find out that actually it's got roots that are way beyond Yvette. You know, they are, they are roots that go several lifetimes back. And, you know, guilt is a human emotion. We can feel guilt, but it's when guilt is too much and there's almost no reason to feel guilty like you've talked about you're almost taking responsibility for something which you don't have to but you can't help it it's just like it's a natural part of you well actually doing some work to try and actually release that because it's an unhelpful you know emotion when it's out you know unhelpful energy which is actually affecting you um going back to where it began to actually do the work to find out what happened so we can actually make peace with it release it make peace with it do whatever what we need to do in a session as I said whether it be guilt anger shame fear you know I've had clients come to those and then also going to physical ailments physical symptoms the same idea really about uh, going back to the root of something which is just taking maybe too much of a presence in the present life, which is unhelpful, perhaps. Yeah. And since since then, since us doing that session, like I say, I slept like a log. I feel totally uh, so much happier in myself. Um, but like we say, I think it's it's great because we're going to go back and go back to the to the beginning of, of when it all started, which I also think will will help even more. But so I just want to say uh, while we end this session now, um, just to say thank you, Sal, so much for, um, you know, for doing the regression, um, because I really do believe it, it's it's helped me immensely it really really has and I can honestly say hand on heart please get in touch with Sal if you have uh, you think that you would like to be regressed and if you think it will help you in this life I can I can honestly say it's the best thing that I've ever ever done honestly it really is fantastic where and what should they do to contact you Okay, so um, people can find me on my website. I'm Spacious Wings Therapies. They can drop me an email quite easily on there, or they can obviously get me through Instagram as well. Um, but I would recommend email. And if you're, you know, able to get to me, I'm around Hertfordshire, London ways in the UK. But I do regress people from all kind of places around the world. I've had people tune in for some of my groups from Australia even and do one-to-ones from other places. So it's we now that we have the wonderful internet, we can do this work despite the distance. And also I do have some upcoming in-person group workshops as well coming up, which are kind of more around the Hertfordshire London area as well. So if somebody's interested, just drop us an email and it's a conversation to be had. And also it's just a past life. We also do a little bit of inner child and different types of regression as well. But uh, yeah, I mean, you know what, the way of looking at it is this is, this is interesting in terms of trying to resolve and work on some stuff, but also regression can give you more of an expansive spiritual experience, including expanding your intuition, your openness, your psychic ability and connecting with beings of light as well. So this can be seen as also a positive expansive experience on your path rather than just to resolve issues <laughs> so yeah thank you Eva. i really appreciate you guys getting in touch it was a, a wonderful experience from my end as well i thoroughly enjoyed it i appreciate it thank you and here's a little clip just to whet your appetite here's what happened during the regression session and in a moment when i say now you're gonna go all the way into that past life body now, stepping into that body, taking your time, and in your room. <laughs> mm. I have putting my hands on my ears. I can't deal with this noise. No. The screaming. <gasps> screaming. 
Is this a, what, when you say screaming? Girls screaming. Oh, I see. The screaming. It's a wonderful noise. I like it very much. Yeah. I think I'm in a hospital. You're in a hospital? Yeah. Oh, okay. I've got flowers, so it's not me. Ah. But somebody's not very well. But you know, I feel like this is all a bit of an inconvenience. Inconvenience? Yes, okay. I've got too, too much to do. They're making me... I don't want to sign this. No. But they're making me sign it. I feel I have to. But I know it's not right. Okay. It's making me quite upset, actually. Mm. Well, thank you for listening to Paranormal Activity with me, Yvette Fielding, and a huge thanks to all our lovely listeners for sharing their visitation stories with us. You can get in touch and share your own stories. Come on, don't be shy at this address. It's paranormalactivitypod at gmail.com. And we are on WhatsApp. Do give us a call. You never know, I could answer the phone. The number is 075 999 27537. That's 075 999 27537. And we are on Instagram and our handle is at Paranormal Activity Pod. Stay up to date with the newest episodes by giving us a follow and we'll be back again same time next week. But if you can't wait until then, visit us at this address. It's www.paranormalpod.co.uk where you can find options to get episodes a day early. Have a great week, stay safe and remember, things aren't always as they seem.